Well, good morning, church. Good to be with you on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Let me tell you some things that are happening here in the life of the church. Uh, Christmas Eve services are 6 and 8 on Saturday. We also have just one service next Sunday at 10 on Christmas Day. Uh, our Grow Kids continues tonight at 6 to 7.30. Uh, the youth group will have pizza tonight, and we will have our white elephant exchange from 6 to 8. Uh, there, there's also some names still on the tree outside the narthex that you can still help out if you'd like to. Is there any other directions, Kelly, for the, the names outside um, of the church? Yes. Awesome. Um, So those are just to help out folks with electricity and power for their utility. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, There's also um, some help needed for the food pantry, the reverse advent calendar, as you can see up on our screen. The other thing to let you know is tomorrow night at 5 o'clock is our first organizational meeting for the craft fair that we will be having on March 18th. So we're getting ready for that. Um, boy, it goes fast, doesn't it? Any other, any other news? Any other uh, announcements? Well, with that being said, let's begin our worship in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to ask Vicki to come forward as she lights our Advent candle. Let's stand together and sing.
Scripture passage that we're looking at today is from the Gospel of Matthew, <clears throat> chapter 1, verses 1, verses 18 through 25. And this is how it reads. <clears throat> this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came to about. His, his mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you, will, you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and birth a son, and, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means... God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the Lord, what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God.
I don't know if you've ever felt like a victim. Some of us have. Um, some, we probably all have felt like a victim or played the part of a victim in some ways. Um, uh, where we got in trouble maybe because of someone else's devious plan. Now, I am sure that you have probably been in this situation where you get accused of doing something like, quit hitting your brother, and you say something like, oh, he hit me first, right? Um, but uh, we probably have all been there. If you have a, a bro- sibling, you've probably been in that situation, or a close cousin, or maybe a neighborhood friend. I'm sure you've had that situation. Or maybe, maybe you just got in trouble for no reason at all. Or, or maybe some, someone did something and you took, had to take the blame or you got blamed for it. Um, you know, I had an odd teacher when I was in sixth grade. Um, I had a great homeroom teacher, but we had to go to this other teacher for English. And she was a little bit off off um, in some ways. In fact, I I think she got let go later on in in her tenure. Um, But I remember sitting in her class one day, and I had my pencil, and um, there was a mark on the desk, a pencil mark, and I decided to erase it. And she pointed me out in front of the whole class and put me down and said, you know, I was known as an artist back then, too, in sixth grade. This artist guy, he's always drawing, He's never doing his homework, and that was somewhat true, probably, but, <laughs> but he's writing and drawing on the desk, and I'm thinking, I'm erasing, and I tried to convince to her that I was just erasing a mark. She stopped the class and totally put me, put me down in front of the whole class um, and proceeded to tell me that I had to write a 500-word essay on why it's not good to write on a desk. I felt like a victim. I didn't... I, I didn't do anything. Um, I, I, I felt like a victim. That, you know, maybe you have felt that way too. Maybe you have got caught um, in the midst of somebody else's stuff. Um, but this could be how Joseph felt. Um, maybe I'm wrong. But he was an upstanding guy. He didn't do anything. And then the woman that he is betrothed to has a secret. And it's not a small secret. It's a pretty big secret. Um, It says here that Joseph was faithful to the law. He was upstanding. Um, So let's ponder a little bit today about where Joseph might be. uh, Because, you know, one of the things that we do at times when we read Scripture is we read the passage with our own context, our own culture, our, our own thinking in 2021 um, we, we think of that. Um, we have it in our mind. And w- meaning, we, we think of the story of how it would be happening today. And the situation of a man finding out his soon-to-be wife was with a child of another person in our culture today, well, the man would, would or might just walk away and say, it's done, it's done. Or maybe, maybe if they thought the relationship was worth salvaging, they might go to counseling. Or maybe, and I've seen this happen, the man would just say, I'm going to adopt this baby as my own. But the scripture is not written in our time, um, and we need to understand the original context, the original situation, the culture, um, if we are going to understand it, Right? So I would argue this morning that that is why we are in the midst of a lot of our, our battles in the church, our divisive battles. Uh, it, we have not taken the time to look at the original context, the original language that the scriptures were written on, and that we use our own context, our own fears, when looking at the situation of the Bible. And then you know what happens? We have problems. So let's look at the original situation in this context of, of Matthew chapter 1. I, I did some research and it, it said marriages um, at the time of Joseph were, were arranged for individuals by their parents. And contracts were negotiated. And after this was accomplished, the individuals would there be, therefore be declared as married. 
um, they would be considered married, and they would be called husband and wife. They did not, however, begin to live together. Instead, the woman would, consider, would continue to live with her parents, and then the man would live with his parents for a year. And the waiting period was to demonstrate the, the faithfulness of the Pledge of Purity given concerning the bride. There, there you go, folks. It always seems like it falls on the women's shoulders, right, in Scripture. Um, if she is found to be with child in this period, she was obviously not pure, but had been involved in an unfaithful sexual relationship. Therefore, the marriage could be annulled. If, however, the one-year waiting period demonstrated the purity of the bride, the husband would, go, would then go home, go to the house of the bride's parents, and in a grand processional march, lead his bride back to his home. They were, there they would begin to live together as husband and wife and consummate their marriage physically. So Matthew's story should be read with that background in mind. So Mary would have been considered not pure. And Joseph could have followed the law. And and if we look at Deuteronomy 22, it said that they could have taken her and her unfaithful companion to the city gates and have them stoned. But he decides instead to privately divorce her. He is a man of mercy, a man of kindness. And did you see what happened after he made his decision? An angel appeared to him. An angel shows up. Now, the angels that we have talked about before in the situation of Zechariah and of Mary the past few weeks, they have been there in person. They have had an actual physical appearance. But Joseph's experience with the angel is a little different. The angel appears in a dream. So it is different. And one might might be able to say, or one might say when reading that, maybe he ate too much pizza before he went to bed, right? But we all have had powerful dreams, right? I've had dreams, and maybe you have too, that have told you what you're supposed to do next in your life. Or maybe uh, they might give you a new perspective. I believe they are at times from God. I really do. And, And it's a different experience than Mary who actually experienced an angel, but no less real, I believe. There is something else that we see in the passages of scriptures, something we can learn about angels. You know, we have been talking about angels in the past few weeks. One of the things that I, I, I told you, we can essentially and think about angels as being messengers. They were creatures uh, slightly above humans, but they, they, they would have face-to-face encounters with God. Therefore, they were able to be communicating to us what God wants us to know. And we know um, their messages from God then. But looking further in Joseph's story in chapter 2 of the book of Matthew, we were looking at chapter 1, and if we look at chapter 2, we can see that angels not only brought, brought a message, but they also brought protection as well. If we look at um, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, verse 13, it says, When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Now, if you know anything about King Herod in the 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 New, New Testament in the book of, of Matthew, um, we can see that he was a great leader, if you do some of the studies, but he was also a very paranoid leader. He did not want anybody else to be above him, anybody else to be king, so, so he, he wanted to get rid of this newborn king. So if we read the scriptures, we know that he slaughtered many, many newborn or Kids up to, uh, babies up to two and a half years old. Many innocent babies die looking for the one who would be born king. So the angel told Joseph to take his family, go to Egypt and be safe. And then if we go a little bit further in, in chapter 2, in verse 19, the angel comes back and says, hey, you know what? 
It's now safe. You can go back home. So angels not only give us the message, but they also protect. Protect so the ultimate work of God can be done. Praise God. And you know what, this, uh, looking at this passage, I, I think we could see that this might be the idea, uh, this might be um, where the idea of a guardian angel might come from. I believe that when we are living out what God wants us to be doing, that we will have protection. Yes, there's going to be spiritual warfare, but there will also be protection. It is interesting that Joseph and Mary had different kinds of angel interactions, angel visitations. And and you know what? One of the things we never read about is that if you and I were going to have a conversation, we, we both had had an angel interaction, visitation, we'd probably talk about it. This is what happened to me. Nowhere in Scripture do we see Mary and Joseph talking about their, their experiences with angels. They, they probably did talk about it, but it's not recorded. And we don't see Jesus asking them as, as a child. One can only imagine Jesus asking his father, what is it like to be in the presence of an angel? And Joseph saying, go ask your mother. For Mary was in the presence, right, of an angel? Joseph dreamed. Joseph believed the the angel in his dreams, and you know what he did? He took Mary to be his wife, and he named the baby Jesus. He listened then later on from the angel, and he fleed to Egypt, and then he went back home. He listened. This was to carry out God's plan. So the question becomes, what are you dreaming about lately? What are you thinking about? You know, I have certain dreams in my life that I have that recur over and over and over again. Like the one dream that I continue to have in my life, I have been out of seminary now for about 15 years. But, but I, I keep having this dream that I either go back to college or I go back to seminary, and it's the end of the semester, and I find out that there's a class that I have either forgotten about or I just ignored all semester. And now comes the time that it's finals and all the papers are due and all the books are, are to be read and I have turned nothing in for this class. I have to make up papers. I have to read all this stuff. And, and it's just really stressful. It seems so real and I have to convince myself when I wake up that it's not true. Now, I have heard other people say to me that they have had that exact dream, that they have similar dreams. Has anybody else had? Yeah, some some other folks. Um, A therapist once told me that those are stress dreams, that, that we should listen to those dreams and maybe take some time off or lighten our load when, when those happen. I had one not too long ago, actually. Some people have dreams that they can fly. Anybody's flown in your dreams? Yeah. 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 You know what? I have had dreams where I've flown, but I've always been holding on the back of, of someone who is flying. And so maybe I'm just a flyer wannabe. I don't know. Um, you may have flown in your dreams. You know, there is a huge science of interpreting dreams. It is interesting that uh, to 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 explore some of those things, I think they're right about those those dreams of college and stuff being stress dreams. But you know what's interesting too is that the Joseph in the the New Testament deal, dealt with dreams. But if we go back and look at the Joseph in the Old Testament, he also dealt with dreams. He he was a dream interpreter. You know, our dreams can lead us in all kinds of di- directions. But because Joseph listened to this angel in the dream and did not play the victim card, he became the father of Jesus. And it led him essentially to peace. He did, he, he did not play the victim card. Um, was, he a perf- was he a perfect father? Probably not because he was a human being. But he was also a man of sensitivity and mercy one that was probably perfect for the situation of Jesus coming into the world. He listened. 
He also found protection from the angel, as the angel told him twice in a dream to go to another location. So that might be the biggest lesson. Listen to the message. Listen for protection. Listen for direction. Because that will lead us, if we follow, a lot of times to peace. Now, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in this situation. I have. Um, But you're driving your car. This actually happened to me on 79 one time. You hit black ice and your car goes spinning out of control. You have absolutely no control. Anybody had that experience happen to them? Quite a few here. Um, It's really scary, because you don't know how it's going to end. You don't know where you're going to end up. Are you going to live through this or what? You know, life can feel like that, can it? It can feel completely out of control. You feel like you lose control. But the truth is, if we really think about it, we never had control in the first place. Right? You know, Joseph must have felt like that. He was a man that was holding on to things. He, he was a man that was following the law to a T. And then some, this, this girl that he was betrothed to, she does something else. And it turns his life upside down. Things are a little bit out of control. But an angel tells him, hey, you know what? It's okay. It's okay that things are okay, that God's got this. And if you do what we say, everything's going to be okay and you'll have peace. May we hear that truth today for us as we live into this Advent season. May we know that when life seems to be swirling out of control, because it can do that, right? That it will be okay. So you may feel like a victim today. You may feel like a victim. Maybe you are caught up in someone else's mess. You know, Joseph had a a visit in a, a dream. I can't promise you that you will have an angel visit in a dream. But we do need to pay attention, I believe, to our dreams. Because I feel that God can speak to us. But I can tell you one thing today. That things are going to be okay. That God's got this. That even if we die in the process of whatever we're going through, that there's a room that is waiting for us. A room beyond our, our imagination. That a room that is prepared for us. Let us be like Joseph and listen. And live faithfully to the, the plan that God has for us. That the and the protection that God is indeed bringing for us. Because I believe God will bring that protection. I believe that God will reveal his plan. And God will, like the banner says for today, bring peace. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for the example of Joseph. We thank you for the word of peace that the angel brought. Um, uh, Life can get out of control sometimes, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for your peace that you can bring in the midst of our storms. Let us remember that Jesus does calm the storm. Let us go forth, therefore, and live into this Christmas season and beyond knowing that your peace will endure and will endure forever. Amen. Please rise and join me in the singing of A Little Town of Bethlehem, the first and last verses, number 230 in your hymn book.
So as we take some time to pray today, let me remind you of some things that we're praying for. Other services have been asking for prayer for people who are traveling through the holidays. We already have a family from our church that left on Friday to go down to Tennessee to be with family. We can be praying for them. Um, We also want to be praying for uh, school kids have been lifted up and just the things that they're going through at at school and in their life. Um, We can be praying for them. Um, you can be praying for my family. It's my brother-in-law, my older sister's husband, Joe, is pr- pretty much fighting for his life up at Hammond. Um, so we can be praying for him. My younger sister, um, Julie, um, her husband has COVID. Um, and another family in the church uh, has a, a son that has COVID. And that can disrupt family holidays, as you know. Um, so we can be praying for those kind of things. Um, and for their world well-being. Any other things to be lifting up in prayer? Continue to pray for Kathy Winters um, as she goes through her um, situation. The doctors have given her some really good advice and she got to see a really good doctor this week and she has a lot of peace there. But we can be praying for her. Um, Continue to pray for those folks that are dealing with loss during this holiday. Any other things? Okay, well, let's take Almeida. Addy. Okay, so we can be praying for Addy and that the doctors can find out what's going on there. Okay, let's pray. Lord God, we come before you as people (laughs) who want to have control, but uh, we know that you are ultimately in control. Lord, when when you gave us one thing to live out, to, to not pursue that, that knowledge of good and evil, we we did it anyway. We're just those that kind of people that will do what we're not supposed to do. And we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, when we have those choices that bring temptation into our life, we we pray that you would just you would just guide us. That we would be choosing the right path. And and Lord, that if we do choose the wrong path, that you would forgive us. And remind us of of new beginnings and and new places to be. We thank you, Lord, for being um, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for forgiveness. And we ask that you would forgive us today for the many sins that we commit in our lives, the ways that we become distracted from who you are. And Lord, as we we pray that this morning, we we also lift up things to you. We pray for people who are sick. We pray for those who who might be undergoing surgery. Um, We want to pray for Jean this morning. Um, We also want to pray for this little one that um, the doctors are trying to find out what might be happening with their brain. Lord, we pray for those folks that might feel out of control, that life is swirling around them, and that they wish that they had control, (laughs) but they know that things are beyond who they are. Lord, help them to realize that you are ultimately in control and that if we seek your ways, you will bring peace. You will bring peace. Help us to live into the church and the support that they, that um, this church can bring because that's the way that you bring peace sometimes is through the other. Lord, uh, I just want to pray for those who are dealing with loss this, this Christmas as well. Um, we just pray as they are um, going through the season. And we all think about people that we love. Uh, may you be with us as we experience grief. Lord, we just want to pray, too, that you would continue to guide us 
to the people that you are calling us to be, that we would be people that would uh, seek who you are, that we would listen to directions, that we would seek your protection. And Lord, as we pray this, we, we thank you for the way that you have brought us peace through how you've taught us how to pray. And we pray that prayer this morning saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Part of worshiping is, is giving. And so as Jen comes forward to play our offertory, I pray that you would take this time to lift up your praises to God who has given us so much. So let's continue to worship today. Uh, let me remind you that if you feel called to be part of our offering today, our plates are near the door. Let's give our praises to God.
Lord God, we thank you for the offering that we receive today. May it be used to communicate your kingdom. May we be used to communicate your peace. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in our final hymn. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Page 240. First and last verses, please. <laughs> Let's go forth in peace. May the grace of God, the, the love of God, and the work of the Holy Spirit be alive through you and with you. And let's go forth in peace. Amen.